Okay, so at the start of August, I refereed the CBJJF. This is the Nogi Advanced Medium Heavyweight Semifinals. I am meeting everybody. I think I had refereed them earlier in the day, so I kind of knew what to expect. The guy on the uh, on the left there with the purple shirt, very fast. Um, so anyway, I'm explaining the rules here to them, you know. Heel hooks are okay, slamming is not okay, arm locks are cool. You know, I'm saying this is not Abu Dhabi, so don't, uh, you know, don't do anything to get disqualified. I set them off. Here we go. And like I said, in a, in a no-gi match, especially, well, in jiu-jitsu in general, but especially in no-gi, generally whoever wins, whoever gets the first points usually wins, you know, unless there's a submission or something, but it's, uh, Jiu-Jitsu is a sport where once you get the first two points and you have an advantage, you know, I don't mean scoring an advantage, but I mean you have the first few points. It, it's like a football field where the field can tilt, you know what I mean? And the first team to get a football, to get a touchdown, they have like the higher ground, so to speak, you know what I mean? Like what this guy's doing right here where he's putting one knee on the ground, you should never do that because your opponent can score it like this with one knee on the ground, never do that. Because your opponent can score on you, but you cannot score on them. Because to get points for a takedown, you have to be standing. And uh, when you have one knee on the ground, you're not standing, but you're also not technically grounded. So the guy can score points on you. He can do it. He can get his points for a takedown on you, but you cannot get your points on your opponent when you have one knee on the ground. So never ever put one knee on the ground. That's my that's my tip for you. And that's probably what I'm thinking as I'm standing there now. The guy in the purple shirt didn't really score a takedown. Maybe I could have given him an advantage there, but I didn't. Um, we'll see how this all unfolds, you know? Looks like the guy there in the yellow shirt was looking for some kind of standing wrist lock, maybe. You know, which is... You know, it, it's in a, in a tournament you can pull it off, but, you know, in practice maybe it's a little hard to do that on your training partners without injuring them, you know? But uh, you can see they're both here vying for a takedown both trying to get the first two points. Nobody wants to pull guard. And there's the... Oh! Probably gonna give that... Oh, where's the points? Do I give him points for that? There it is. So the guy in the purple shirt, like I said, he shot in, took the guy down, there was a bit of a scramble, but uh, the guy with the purple shirt ended up on top, inside the guy's half guard, and I don't know if you can tell, they're right on the edge of the mat right now. Like, they're basically on that red safety area, and the guy on the bottom is looking for like a banana split or an electric chair, whatever you want to call it, you know? And uh, But the guy in the purple shirt, he's resisting it, you know? And we'll see how this all unfolds. Uh, the rules for this were your standard, you know, IBJJF no-gi rules. I'm probably going to give him two for that. Yeah, there's the two. That's a turnover, you know? I maybe could have given him, yeah, there's the advantage for the uh, submission attempt. So now the guy in the yellow is uh, up, you know. I give him three there for passing the guard. Yeah, because after he swept the guy, he was clear of his guard for a minute there. Well, it doesn't have to be a minute, it's three seconds. And it looks like now he's doing a, uh, a nogi or trying a nogi Ezekiel choke on the guy, but it's, uh, those aren't so easy to land. You get people who are like, who specialize in those, like that crazy Russian guy that fights in the UFC, it can pull it off on almost anybody, but, um, anyway. So now the guy on the bottom, I mean, I can't see the score, but the guy on the bottom, even though he got his first two points, he's down by who knows what, you know, a little bit right now, you know, but you can see this is the advanced division, nobody's Nobody's panicking, you know, everybody's... You can see they're looking at the clock, too. That's another sign. These guys are somewhat experienced. Oh, there's his turnover. That's two. I give him an advantage for almost passing the guard. So the guy in yellow got to his knees. And, uh... The fellow, uh, yeah, and he's trying to... See, this is the part where you can't really see it, but, like... They're kind of they're off. See, they're off the mat now. You know what I mean? See, I, I, I give the guy four for mounting, but then I realize, you know what? I'm like, 
I said, you know what, actually, no, I'm not going to give you the four. Because they were like 97% off the mat when the dude mounted him. And uh, I don't want to say it was a mistake on my part, but I'm like, you know what, take away the four, we're just giving him an advantage. Because you can't mount a guy when you're on the mat, the next mat. This is not that, you know. So I took away the guy's four, I just gave him an advantage. And um, then the guy in purple shoots in for a takedown, which is a really good idea, actually. Whenever a referee restarts a match, you want to be the guy that's right off the hop, scoring some points. And I think, I think they went right off the mat, so I'm probably going to give the guy in purple an advantage. He gets, yeah, because they went right off the mat again. Because to score points, you have to stay on the mat, right? Whether it's a mount and or a guard pass, or a takedown, they have to stay for three seconds on the mat, you know? Which is why the guy who did the mount, I took away his four and just gave him an advantage. Yeah, there's going to be another two. You know? But this one's worth two, because see how they're laying on the mat? You know? That guy in the blue shirt, he's pretty quick. And you can see then in, in there's a... That red area, that's... That's the, I don't call it the danger zone, but it's definitely the border, you know? You know? The, uh, gave the guy another advantage there. I think that might have been for a guard, almost guard pass. I'm not sure. Anyway, we're starting in the middle again. And, um, I think the guy on the top is uh, up on points now because of a couple of takedowns that he got there. But, uh, I don't have the scoreboard right in front of me. But uh, the moral of the story here is that if you want to score points, it has to stay on the mat. If it's on the other side of the border, that's not gonna, that shouldn't be worth points, you know? It's funny, I, uh, years ago, I was at another event, a Naga, I think, somewhere in the States, and they were giving points to people no matter where they went. Even if you, even if your takedown landed on the, in the middle of the next mat over, or you, double leg the guy and end up in the in the kitchen they were still given points and I said what's going on they said because you know the, the mat was similar to this and they said it doesn't matter where you land as long as you you know get the takedown you get the points I'm like so if I take if I do a double leg we go at the door and onto the onto the road mm -hmm. so basically what you, moral of the story is if you fight in Naga you can use the entire surface of the earth apparently anyway um, also I think in Abu Dhabi they they allow you to go onto the carpet and into the hallway and God knows what else, you know. Anyway, you can see in the bottom here, the guy's looking for another Nogi Ezekiel. I give somebody a penalty here, I don't know why. Maybe he held the guy's shorts or something. Yeah, I give a penalty to the guy on top there. Maybe, I don't know, was it for holding his shorts? Maybe it was. Or it could have been for stalling. I don't know. But um, the guy on top is still up on points. And, uh, because he scored a few takedowns, and I didn't give the guy the four for mounting the dude over on the next map, and that's the end of the match. And that's that. So, pretty sure I gave the win to the guy in, uh, the purple shirt there. And there you go. A nice big hug for everyone. And it's funny here, at the end of the match, Another referee comes over to talk to me because I guess one of the I guess the athlete in yellow was her guy and she's like, How come you gave him the four and then you took it away? And I was like, Because they were off the mat. You know? And then she's like, But it was stabilized. And I was like, Well, I guess you and I disagree. You know? So whatever. What are you gonna do?